Hi, my name is Stephen McGee, and I'm the author of Curing Electromagnetic Hypersensitivity. I'm here to review this experiment that I talk about in the book, and that is electrified flooring. So you can see we've got a tile floor, and we've got plants growing in contact with the floor. I'm going to show you how this setup is. So we've got a standard pottery base, covered in foil and then the base of the pot has foil strips and they connect the root system of the plant into the floor. So we got three sets of plants. These have all been grown on different floors in my home. I have three sets of tile floors in my home and when they came into the home they all looked like this. And this is how the Dyke and Bacchia is supposed to look. So it has highly patterned leaves, very dull, and they're about the size of your hand. And it's a very beautiful plant, and it's a very common house plant. So this experiment was designed to see what electrified floors does to the Dyke and Bacchia. And by connecting the plants into the electrified tile floors of the home enabled us to see some of the biological damage that would occur. So this is the least electrified floor in the home. This is the master bathroom. As you can see, we have a very good set of plants. So the plant on the left is from last year and the plant on the right is from this year. And in this particular location, they're actually showing almost comparable growth patterns. Now the leaves are a little bit retarded. It's not quite right, but it's pretty good. And some of the Dyphenbachias in my home really deform and we'll get to that later. So this looks very, very good in comparison to my controls. So certainly the master bathroom tile floor exhibits the best growth patterns. So this is the front hallway tile floor. It's the one that's closest to the street. And you can see that we've got the two plants again. And we're gonna have a little look at last year's plant. There's quite a mix of stuff going on in this plant. So we've got the small leaves They've mostly lost their patterning. And in amongst them, we've got some radio frequency exposed shiny leaves. Radio frequency exposed leaves tend to go very shiny, but no patterning. So quite a mix in this plant. But this one here is the surprise. Because as you can see, it actually looks like the plant does when it comes into your home. So we've got very big, highly patterned leaves. But this one went through a metamorphosis in the sense that it came in with big leaves. This is one of the last ones. And then it started deforming. And we're getting radio frequency exposed shiny leaves. And then they put up this new growth. And it actually looks quite comparable to the way it should do. And you're probably wondering why that occurred. Well, I actually cut down a very large tree at the front of my home between January and July of this year. And as soon as that tree was gone, I started putting up this growth. And the reason why I cut down the tree was because I had established it was, emitting, it was emitting very strange electromagnetic fields. And I never expected it to have an effect on this experiment. So that was kind of a surprise. But the interesting thing is, is it doesn't seem to have affected the plant from last year. But it's had a profound effect on the plant from this year. And it's one of the things that I've noticed is once these plants have been exposed for a long time to 
and a natural electromagnetic field, they stay deformed. But if you remove them from that field before they've gone too deformed, then you can actually revert the growth back. And that appears to be what happened in this plant. So this is my kitchen tile floor. So the thing about this floor is it's the closest floor to the electrical utility meters. And my electrical utility meters and fuse board are very close to this location. And also close to this location is an Itron 100G transmitting utility meter. And all of these three plants have been growing in contact with the kitchen floor. And this is how they're growing. So you pretty much wouldn't recognize this as a Diefenbachia. Yeah. Very stalky, very weird looking leaves. And it's very retarded. It's a lot of retardation going on. The same here. And you have one of the original leaves, so yeah. It's definitely a Diefenbachia. Yeah. There's no doubts about that. But you can see that we've got the very shiny radio frequency exposed leaves on the kitchen floor. And that's probably because of the grounding system in addition to the radio frequency transmitting meter. So I have the kitchen rated as very biologically toxic in this home. I'm very wary of it. And you're probably wondering why there's three in this kitchen experiment. Well, these two were the original two that were grown in contact with the tile floor. And this one was one that was grown outside. I was actually growing this near to the electrical ground rods. And they came in for the winter and then stayed inside for this year. And you can see that it's now actually got deformity that looks quite similar to these plants. So it's very reproducible in the kitchen floor. So that's my kitchen floor tile plants. So as you can see, there's a wide range of things that can occur on your tile floors. And some floors are far healthier than other floors. And that was the purpose of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.